Yep, let's get started, please. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, electronic devices, please. You want to mute everybody? Yeah. Everybody, please mute. I hear now. Welcome to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Kirfler Canley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. We hold classes in the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. The Tampa Branch was established in the year 1996. At this time, I'd like to introduce to you the Dean of the Tampa Branch, Dr. Joel Turner, and our president, Dr. Cynthia Smith. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Now, Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many, but we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is a title that our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew, Greek, nor Latin languages have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in our own English language until some 1400 years after the death of the Messiah. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title, just like the Lord and God. Now, Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state, He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in His pure spirit state, symbolized on the chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because the cloud has no particular, no descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within a cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being that is having shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form, this form can only be seen in divine visions and understood only in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should all ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh let the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. 
Also in this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of the threefold tabernacle pattern, and absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. We have 10 primary constitutional aims and objectives of the Institute, and they are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or the so-called law of nature. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scripture, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensation and ages. Seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of times. Eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace, and our slogan is speak the truth. We have class dedicated in prayer. Joel, by, and you can tell me who's the prayer. Dr. Joel. So we'll have a prayer by Darlene Webster, followed by a musical selection by Judith Turner, and uh, a scripture reading by Sherry Williams, which is Ephesians, the fourth chapter. The readers this morning will be Sherry Williams and Pam Turner. I don't know. Hello. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, good. Yeah, speak up a little bit. Can you hear Hi. us? Can you, can you hear me? Hi. Hi. I can hear you guys. Oh, okay. good. Good. Hi. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, I'm so excited to have, to listen to Glass. Yay! <laughs> we have one to do right after this. <laughs> okay. Well, if we could please just all bow our hearts and our minds, and we just want to give thanks to Yahweh that we have been given this divine um, vision and revelation um, mm -hmm. directly from Him, and we are ever so grateful all that he has blessed us with and continually blessing us with it all the time. All praise is unto him. And and thank you. Hallelujah. Yes. All praise is Yahweh. Hallelujah. 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 This song is um <coughs> Traveling, and I'm going to do Lisa's part. And it was a song that was inspired by my driving home on Highway PD uh -huh. from Mad Mount Horeb. Cool. Traveling. Oh, 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 dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. <laughs> Traveling this evening, the direction is home, blue, purple, scarlet dress, the horizon. 
a reflection of a journey I couldn't possibly make. Yahshua, the first son to humbly see the grave. I the will to express all I want to say, but the words they stumble at my feet. All the same, I thank you for lighting my way and for giving me a purpose to leave. A purpose to breathe. For I woke this morning in time to see a dawn Yahweh sun expressing glory across the sky. A reflection of a gift I've been graced to know Yahshua, the resurrector, the spruce of life. I the will to express all I want to say, but the words, they stumble at my feet. All the same, I thank you for lighting my way and for giving me a purpose to leave, a purpose to grieve. What a gift! I never thought it possible. What a hope, a hope I've never known before. When I am done learning from reflections on the whole I'm here. The only one glorified son I the will to express all I want to say, but the words they stumble at my feet all the same. I think for lighting my way and for giving me a purpose to leave a purpose to leave. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> Good morning. I love that song, Judith. Ah, yeah. It's nice. Good morning. 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 I'll be reading out of the Holy Name Bible, containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, revised by A.B. Trainer of the Scripture Research Association, Incorporated. Mm -hmm. Ephesians, the fourth chapter. I, therefore, the prisoner of Elohim, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called and one hope of your calling. One Elohim, one faith, one immersion. One is Yahweh and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of the Messiah. 
Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he took captive captivity and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first mm -hmm. into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and some mm -hmm. prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the sons, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of the Messiah, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of Yahweh unto a mm -hmm. perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of the Messiah, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But being truthful in love, ye may grow up unto him in all things, which is the head, even the Messiah, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. This I say, therefore, and exhort through Yahweh that ye henceforth live not as the heathen live in the vanity of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of Elohim through the ignorance that is in them because of the hardness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lustful practices to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned from the Messiah. <clears throat> if so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Yahshua, that ye put off your former behavior, the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man which after Elohim is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not, let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the adversary. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the things which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt conversation proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers, and grace not and grieve not the Holy Spirit of Yahweh, whereby we are sealed unto the day of redemption. Sherry, we can't hear you. Hello? Okay, we got you. All right. Do you know where I left off? 30. 30? Okay. Mm -hmm. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of Yahweh, whereby we are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as Yahweh for the Messiah's sake hath forgiven you. That was Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Hallelujah. So I'd like to just welcome everybody and uh, uh, um, thank you for uh, supporting the class. And uh, this, this morning we're going to have a, a three speaker format. And uh, because for some reason the, the bell uh, does not work, it's like uh, something about the, the microphone system won't pick it up. That what I'll do is when you have five minutes, I will send you a chat message, okay? And then you'll know you have five minutes left. So our first speaker this morning will be Dr. Alexander Rachmilovich from the Madison, Wisconsin class.
good morning, everybody. Good morning. Can you can you hear me well? Yes. 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 Sasha, uh, let yes. me know. Let me know when you want a chart. And this goes for all the speakers. If anyone wants a chart displayed, uh, just go ahead and, and, and let me know, and I'll display whatever chart. OK, sounds good. Well, it's, uh, it's great uh, to be here. And it's uh, only a privilege to share anything which uh, Yasha uh, has shown uh, me. So in the beginning, I uh, want to convey best regards to people in class from uh, some brethren in uh, Russia. Uh, actually, yesterday, I talked to a brother from Crimea, uh, Russia, it used to be Ukraine, now it's Russia. And he asked me when I talked to American brethren uh, to send them regards and tell them that People in Russia believe in the names of Yahweh and Yasha. Cool. Um, so um, what I would do, I, I would probably work with um, some uh, aspect uh, of, the, uh, of the purpose of Yahweh. And let's start with the scripture reading. Let's go to Ephesians 4. And uh, I need somewhere around 16, 17, but uh, it's hard to start there. So let's start at 11. Ephesians 4 and 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the sons, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of the Messiah. So we are talking about, sorry, I will be interrupting. Um, so we're talking about the body of Yahshua, the Messiah. And the souls of those who believe in Yahshua, they comprise his uh, body. So, mm -hmm. and the purpose is, uh, as we see uh, uh, later, just to uh, grow this body or to grow uh, in the spirit. Continue on, please till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of Yahweh unto a perfect man, unto the, so the knowledge, the knowledge of son of Yahweh, the knowledge of Yahshua is important that I will uh, touch upon it later on. Continue on. Unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of the Messiah, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive but being truthful in love ye may grow up unto him in all things which is the head even the messiah from so whom paul is saying that we need to grow up in uh yashua the messiah and the next verse please from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. So it's talking about uh, increase, uh, increasing of the body of uh, uh, Yahshua the Messiah. And this is increase, uh, well, personally within every member of the body and it's also edifying the body and increasing the body uh, as a whole. So let's go to um, John 17 and start with one. So here Yahshua uh, soon before his death he is in the Garden of uh, Gethsemane, and he is praying to the Father. John 17 and 1. These words spake Yahshua, and lifted up his eyes to heaven, and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. And this is, should be uh, our prayer when, when 
Yahshua is in us, our prayer is to glorify the Father. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. So he will, so the, um, the purpose, the Father gave Yahshua the power for the purpose. So he can give eternal life, not to everybody, or, but to as many as the Father has given him. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And this is life <clears throat> eternal, that they might know thee, the only true Elohim, and Yahshua the Messiah, whom thou hast sent. So and this is <clears throat> eternal life. It's to know the Father and to know Yahshua the Messiah. Now, knowing the Son and the Father, you know, knowing have two parts. The knowing, so first, you know, we need to know uh, the truth and uh, we should know the truth about the Son and the Father. And ultimately, we should know, we, have, we should understand or we have to exp experientially know, know from experience the Son and the Father. And if you look at the Moses uh, chart, if you can put Moses chart, uh, it says that Yahweh is uh, spirit and Yahweh is the sum of attributes. It's wisdom, intelligent knowledge, uh, love, beauty, just, justice, foundation, power, and uh, strength. That's what we should know because that's what uh, eternal life is. Now, how we are going to know uh, the Father, because the Father, Yahweh, he is uh, invisible. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Romans 1, uh, 19 and 20. Romans 1 and 19. Because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them. For Yahweh has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and supernal nature, so that they are without excuse. So to know the Father, to know the invisible uh, Yahweh, to know, and as we, uh, we're talking later, to grow in his attributes, because that's what he desires, uh, he made the whole creation. Uh, he made uh, uh, the universe. He made the history, which we read in the Bible about the history of uh, children of Israel. And these are the examples from these physical examples. Uh, we can know uh, invisible principles about him. Now, if you if you can apply uh, this particular. Uh, approach to different things, uh, then uh, you will be able to answer uh, many questions. For example, when I uh, talk to uh, Christians and I discuss the gospel with the uh, uh, Russian uh, Christians on uh, Russian forums online, uh, sometimes on a daily basis, and very often you hear the argument, so why, why bother? Why do we need to know anything about your creator. Uh, you can die and you can uh, go to heaven. Is it really important to know if his unity, if his trinity, all things he wants us to do is just to believe in him. And especially when it comes to the name of the creator. So uh, who cares how you're going to call him? You know, he is uh, not a petty God, you know, he knows. Uh, who you're talking to, and, uh, and you probably heard all this kind of um, yeah. uh, reasoning from the people. Now, if uh, you apply Romans 1, 18 and 20 uh, to this, and we know from uh, uh, the Bible, from the purpose, that our Creator wants us to know uh, Him intimately, so He wants to be our husband. 
So we, as uh, people, as soul, uh, need to be uh, you know, a wife to a husband, and the husband is the creator. Now, if uh, husband and wife uh, sleep and, uh, uh, at night, and the wife uh, start, uh, let's say my name is uh, Sasha, and the wife starts saying, John, 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 and her sleep. <laughs> has nothing, nothing wrong with name John, but for me it's very wrong because it's not my name. <laughs> so, you know, the marriage is ruined, and, uh, you know, I'm, uh, as a husband, unhappy. And it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a very tragic situation when this thing happens. It's Romans 1, 19 and 20. Mm -hmm. Just our family husband doesn't like when we use names of other deities, like Lord and God and Jehovah. Uh, by the way, uh, on the side, when you say Jehovah, there is a double iniquity in the name of Jehovah. First, it's letter J, or sound J, which is not in Hebrew, not in uh, uh, Latin, not in Greek, not even uh, in English only recently. So it's a false, it cannot be a Jehovah. And then our creator hears J sound, and then he hears Hova. Now, if you look up Hova, what sounds uh, hover means in Hebrew, and it will be uh, 1943 uh, in Strong's, it means mischief. That's what mm. hover means. So people when call Jehovah is just double iniquity. They call him the heavenly father like mischief or iniquity somebody. Mm. Uh, or example about knowing if he is unity, if he is a trinity, why uh, shall we know uh, uh, Yahweh. So it depends. Uh, again, if you look at Romans 1, 19 and 20, if you have a family, you can have a family when uh, when wife does uh, something wrong, make some uh, little mistake, uh, the husband is going, is punishing her, is uh, yelling at her, is beating her up. It's an abusive relationship. And uh, in another uh, relationship, uh, the husband is just uh, uh, the opposite, you know, the, the woman used to be an adulterous woman, had different kind of uh, relationship, and uh, she had a lot of debts, credit card debts and others, and then the guy married her, and he paid all her debts, and he forgave all her previous uh, connections, and he loves her, and he uh, does everything for her without really asking anything in uh, return. So it's two, two different kind of relationship. One is unhappy and another one is happy one. So this abusive kind of relationship, it's uh, likened how some people perceive the heavenly husband or the heavenly father. Uh, if they do something wrong, the heavenly father is going to punish them. It's like Catholic uh, mm -hmm. religion. Mm -hmm. And uh, they live in uh, fear. And uh, so they're trying to follow all these laws, but inevitably uh, they break in uh, this kind of rules and uh, they're waiting for, the, for God to punish them. And another relationship, which hopefully we are in, it's a relationship of love because he saved us by grace. He saved all our iniquities and this is a different kind of relationship. So mm -hmm. if you think that our heavenly father is a revengeful uh, man or deity uh, and uh, you, will, you will have a very different perception and it's a wrong, uh, it's a wrong uh, knowledge about the father and the son, and it's not going to lead to the eternal life. Only true knowledge and understanding can lead to eternal life. And uh, this is knowledge and understanding and experience of the father and the son as saving hell, as loving hell.
Now let's go um, uh, to the beginning. Let's go to the uh, uh, purpose. Let's and uh, let's go to Genesis. And so what what I'm going to show just several examples. Romans 1, 19 and 20, so we can understand better, we can know better our Father and what He uh, wants uh, of us. So Genesis 1 and uh, 22. So Yahweh is creating a man, He created Adam, and then He is explaining why He creates Adam. Genesis 1 and 22. And Elohim blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let fowl multiply in the earth. Right. So he created Adam. He created Adam and uh, Eve. Eve was uh, within Adam uh, at this time. It says male and female created them. It's a, uh, it's a different uh, lecture. But he told them, Be fruitful and multiply. And people uh, in the world, in Christianity, understand that, that we all have to, you know, go and uh, have children. And uh, it was part of the reason, of course, because physical reveals spiritual, but it's not only physical part. The most important is the spiritual, so we can understand the purpose of our Creator. So it means we have to be fruitful and multiply from the spiritual uh, standpoint. So before uh, coming to this uh, spiritual uh, aspect of it, so let's go through the uh, example. Uh, Genesis, the same book of Genesis, um, uh, 15th chapter, uh, verse uh, 12. So Yahweh is giving a vision to uh, Abram. Genesis 15 and 12. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram. And lo, a horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterward shall they come out with great substance right so this is like really the purpose of yahweh in a nutshell so he has chosen uh people he called them uh, later they are called israel or children of israel and before these people are born there is a purpose that uh, they are going to go from canaan's land which is the promised land or type of eternal life, uh, type of heaven. They're going to go down to Egypt and they're going to be uh, oppressed in Egypt, but then they're going to come out of uh, Egypt with a great substance. Now, uh, Abram, the name Abram, Abram means exalted father. So it's a type of uh, Yahweh who is exalted father. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, before the children were born, it was already a purpose uh, that in him, that in his uh, loins, you know, he will bring forth uh, these children, these uh, chosen ones, which will uh, later uh, come to Canaan's land or in, inherit eternal life uh, in principle with a great uh, substance. So uh, let's go to uh, Ephesians. We'll, we'll just, I think, uh, correlate physical and uh, 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 spiritual at this point. Uh, Ephesians 1 and 3. Ephesians 1 and 3. Blessed be the Elohim and Father of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places in the Messiah, according as he hath chosen us in him 
before the foundation of the world. That so we he has chosen us, he has chosen our souls in him before the foundation of the world, as he has chosen the children of Israel to inherit Canaan's land before the, their foundation or before they were born, before from uh, uh, Abram. Continue on. In the that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having... Right. Having, right, predestinated, so continue on, sorry. having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Yahshua the Messiah to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. To right, the, so it's according to pleasure of his will and his, uh, you know, his, uh, he created the creation, but he is coming back, he is bringing this creation back to him with increase with our souls as his children. That's mm -hmm. pretty much the purpose. So it's reflected in the law and in the prophets, as we know, Isaiah 8 and 20 to the law and to the prophets. Uh, another example would be again in the book of Genesis, uh, chapter 20, starting with one. Genesis 20 and 1. And Abram journeyed from thence toward the south country and dwelled between Kadesh and Shur and sojourned in Gerar. And Abraham said of Sarah, his wife, she is my sister. And Abimelech, king of Gerar, sent and took Sarah. But Elohim came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man for the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. But Abimelech had not come near her, and he said, Lord, wilt thou slay also a righteous nation? Said he not unto me, she is my sister? And she, even she herself said, he is my brother. In the integrity of my heart and in innocency of my hands have I done this. And Elohim said unto him in a dream, Yea, I know that thou didst this in the integrity of thy heart, for I also withheld thee from sinning against me. Therefore right, suffered okay. I thee. Yeah, I'm sorry, just for the time's sake, could you skip to the part when uh, uh, he multiplied uh, uh, Abraham, uh, he gave him a great substance or multiplied uh, his... Uh, a life called 14. And Abimelech took sheep and oxen and men servants and women servants and gave them into, unto Abram and restored him, Sarah, his wife. Right. That... So you know, the story is uh, Abram and Sarah, his wife. So uh, Abram is a uh, uh, type of uh, uh, the creator and uh, his wife. It's a type of uh, his assembly or uh, his chosen. And uh, this his chosen or his uh, wife is uh, given to, uh, to uh, Abimelech. So it's uh, given to, uh, you know, to the, uh, you know, as the children of Israel were uh, given to Egypt. So his uh, wife is given to Abimelech, but Abimelech didn't have a power uh, over, uh, you know, he didn't sleep with her, which is spiritually speaking, he didn't have a power of uh, her soul. And again, as a result, uh, uh, he, of all these events, uh, they came back together, Abraham and uh, Sarah, and they left uh, this land with a great substance. So mm -hmm. it's a reflection of, of the same uh, purpose. Uh, it's in the story. Now, this story repeats itself. And for the reason, if you go several chapters forward to Genesis 26 and start with 6. So now we are talking about the son of uh, uh, Abraham, which is Isaac. 
And the similar story is happening with uh, Isaac. Genesis 26 and 6. And Isaac dwelt in Gerar. And the men of the place asked him of his wife. And he said, She is my sister. For he feared to say, She is my wife, lest, said he, the men of the place should kill me for Rebekah, because she was fair to look upon. And it came to pass, when he had been there a long time, that Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked out at a window and saw, and behold, Isaac was sporting with Rebekah, his wife. And Abimelech called Isaac and said, Behold, of a surety, she is thy wife. And how saidst thou, she is my sister? And Isaac said unto him, Because I said, lest I die for her. And right. Abimelech... So, of course, we're going to skip to verse 12, please. 12. Then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold, and Yahweh blessed him. Right. So again, the story repeats itself. Why the story repeats itself? Mm -hmm. Because it's reflecting another principle in the scriptures that uh, Yahshua was saying that the son cannot do uh, anything else but what the father has shown him. So uh, it's uh, you know, it's uh, the son is fulfilling what, you know, what the father uh, is doing. Therefore, we see the repetition. But the principle, it's again the same. So the uh, wife is uh, given to another man, but then they come in out again as a family with a great uh, substance. Now, these are the examples uh, in the law, if you go in examples in the prophets, you know, the famous example, of course, it's a, a book of Job. And uh, when we read the book of uh, Job, you remember that um, uh, Yahweh Elohim allowed uh, Satan to tempt or test Job. And uh, uh, Job was afflicted like... Uh, uh, Sarah was afflicted and uh, Rebecca uh, was uh, afflicted. But, and uh, Job lost uh, uh, his uh, cattle and uh, he lost uh, uh, his, uh, his uh, uh, children. But through all these trials, uh, he never blasphemed uh, Yahweh. And mm -hmm. uh, as a result, uh, he was found uh, uh, faithful and uh, Yahweh rewarded him, he gave him increase, which we can read in uh, uh, Job, the last chapter, uh, 42nd chapter, verse 10. 42 and 10. Mm -hmm. Job 42 and 10. And Yahweh turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, Yahweh gave Job twice as much as he had before. All right, so he gave Job twice as much as he had before. So, uh, so Yahweh has, uh, uh, oh, I have five minutes left? Yep. Okay. Uh, um, uh, John uh, 15 and uh, 1. John 15 and 1. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. All right, so... Uh, we are bringing uh, fruit uh, because we are like branches who bring fruit in Yahshua the Messiah. And he is uh, afflicting or putting an infliction or uh, pressure to every uh, branch or purchase this branch which needs to bear fruit. But for what purpose? Verse 8. 15 and 8. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. So, because the Father is glorified with us bearing much fruit, it's like Yahshua was praying, 
in the garden of Gethsemane. So glorify your son as uh, your son may uh, glorify uh, you. So we, uh, he is putting us uh, through trials as uh, James. Uh, let's go to James uh, 1 and 2. James 1 and 2. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations. So no, it sounds unnatural, so why we should uh, count all joy? Go ahead. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. So the trial of our faith worketh work patience. So whenever we are going through the trials, it's for the reason. It's mm -hmm. so we know the Father. So we know patience, long suffering, his uh, uh, love, his mercy. We have stronger foundation mm -hmm. because that's how the fruit uh, is growing. That's how we uh, grow through the trials. Mm -hmm. And the fruits we are bringing to the Father or increasing the Father, uh, it's in Galatians 5. Uh, that's probably the last scripture uh, because I'm out of time. Galatians. Five and twenty-two. Galatians five and twenty-two. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands, oh. as unto Yahweh. But the fruit of the spirit is love. Oh, I'm in the wrong one. Sorry. Joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Right and. Uh, as it, uh, to do that, we have to submit ourselves to our husbands as well. So we have to believe in Yasha, and Yasha is the one who is growing this fruit in us. So thanks be to Yasha, and uh, thank you. Hallelujah. Thank Hallelujah. You. Okay, for our second speaker, I'd like to ask Dr. Kathy Hughes from Pennsylvania IDMR. I think you're muted. Okay, got it. Okay. Um, I really enjoyed Sasha. First of all, it's such an honor and a privilege to be having class with y'all. And I feel so blessed to be able to come to another class that I really would just like to sit and listen. I want to be fed. Oh. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> That's all I ask. All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, Hallelujah. Thank you, Ashua. Um, then uh, uh, our third speaker will be Dr. Daryl Hughes from Pennsylvania IDMR. She said she wanted to listen to somebody from another class. <laughs> uh, I like listening to you. All right, I will, I will be up for a little while. I'll share a little bit. I really did enjoy the remarks of the first speaker. It is a pleasure uh, to be here and uh, to be able to be a part of, of, of this teaching. It's such a great teaching. It's, and it really has opened up a lot of doors here for everybody with, amidst the, the uh, pandemic for people to be able to get together even a little bit more across the country in ways that we sure. haven't done before. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Really. Uh, and, and it really does, uh, in some ways, takes the flesh out of it too for us, which yeah. is always good. Um, again, I really did re enjoy the remarks of the first speaker uh, and what he shared. Um, I'd like, I guess, um, there's a couple of things that I'd like to pick up on from where he was talking, uh, where Sasha was talking in terms of, uh, he had talked about relationships. Uh, we've been talk, talking about the sun. Um, and uh, I, I guess I'm going to go back a little bit. Um, I do think that this is, this teaching is so great. It's something that just isn't taught anywhere. Right. Um, it, it's a wonderful thing. Um, I am going to, I think I know how to, to use the, the little arrow here looks cool um so so anyways um we say in the moderation we talk about how yahweh's pure spirit and in this state is incomprehensible and inscrutable we can't know him mm -hmm. um and but yet he did 
um, knowing that man couldn't perceive of him in this state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim, the word or son. And the word is, the, the word means expression. Um, it's an, ex this is an expression of him or a manifestation of him. And it's such a simple principle because mm -hmm. um, even knowing people from a physical point of view, um, uh, we, we, we're in our cloud. I mean, who we are is really inside of us. It's not something that people can see. It's mm -hmm. something that uh, they, they could come to know us. And how do they come to know us? But through our word and our actions or deeds manifesting mm -hmm. what's inside of us. It's not right. that complicated of a principle. Um, and uh, to really come to know somebody is a special thing. It really is a special thing. I'm working in, in psychology and in therapy and everything. It, it really is. Um, uh, he talked about, uh, the previous speaker talked about like good relationships versus bad relationships and different types of relationships that we could have. Mm -hmm. um, and it is through relationships that we do come to know somebody. Get me, um, was it John? Uh, I want John, uh, John 17 and three. Give me John 17 and three. John 17 and three. And this is life eternal that they might know thee, the only true Elohim and Yahshua the Messiah whom thou hast sent. So this is life eternal that we might know him. See, and, and the previous speaker talked about that, you know, he did give us a way to know him. Uh, um, through the things that he made. Um, and, and there's a lot of different ways that he's given us to know him. Now we can know somebody from an academic point of view, mm -hmm. and then we can know somebody from a, 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 re, a spiritual, but even in a physical sense, we can know somebody from an academic point of view right. and we can know somebody personally. Mm -hmm. There's such different versions of knowing somebody. Like right. it's hard for us to really know people from the past because we, we can't interact with them personally, but we could study somebody. Mm -hmm. Now to just give a simple example, um, I, the way that I know my father is different than the way anybody who didn't know him knows, knew my father, can know my father. Mm -hmm. I can tell you things about him. I could describe him. And there's different things that I could do to, to, to teach you about my, my father from an academic point of view. But to really come to know him is really a, a, a personal thing. It really is a personal mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. now, now, there is a way that you could come to know my father from a personal point of view, actually, and that's by coming to know me. Yeah, right. Because I do bear a lot of the traits of my father. So if you come to know me, you will have a little, you'll have a better understanding of knowing my father. And this is the same thing that we want to know with our creator. But our first aim is, is to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Now, I do want to talk a little bit about um, um, the relation. I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about the relationship between a father and a son, um, because, and it was already brought up, we, we have, um, uh, and this is I, I, not to focus on the male, <laughs> the daughter and a parent, or a child and a parent. I could, let me say it that way. Um, it, it's the same idea. Um, we come to know our parents in a certain way. We also, and, and we learn in psychology, we come to, to be um, mm -hmm. our, par our parents to yeah. an extent. Now, I know there's things about my parents I didn't like. <laughs> and, and I know that there's some of them that I thrive not to take on some of those attributes. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but, but most of us, um, so my father was very OCD. I used to pick on him about it a lot. Um, um, I actually, and maybe it's how, why I got this feel when I was a teenager, I used to actually do experiments with him when, with, when I was a teenager <laughs> to see how he would respond to me um, disrupting his routine. So, uh, <laughs> so he had this, he'd get home, he worked the second shift, he'd get home around midnight, uh, 1130 to midnight in that area. And he had a really strict routine. My mother couldn't interrupt him during that routine. If she interrupted him, he'd get upset. And so I would intentionally do things to try to disrupt that routine. And, and just to see how he would uh, um, adapt. <laughs> he actually did very well. <laughs> but, mm. but what's funny is I used, the point that I want to make is that there were things in him that it's like, I didn't want to have that. But the truth is I do have some of that. Mm 
you know, when we're honest with you, with, each, with ourselves, we actually have mm -hmm. picked up some of the things we didn't want from our parents. Mm -hmm. Now, when we talk about Yahweh Elohim and Yahshua, these, this is a much better father than any of us could ever have or ever, anybody mm -hmm. could ever be humanly possible. But there's still types and shadows. Now, we know uh, somebody like Carl and, and even Joel and other people might be able to present uh, good examples of, of how we come from our parents from a genetic point of view. Um, but there's, we also become our parents from a psychological point of view. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a process for that. And part of that process is coming to know them. And it's coming to know them in a sense that's not academic, but personal. Um, and, and, and we, we uh, and, and it really has to do with that relationship between our parents and us that, that help us to, to move into that. Um, we don't, we're not born having values. We really aren't. We don't, right. come, out, we don't come out of the womb and, and have values about certain things. We take them on from our parents, mm -hmm. see? And it's a development. Now, there's actually a, a, a gentleman named Kohlberg who, who developed stages of moral development. And it, it's sort of interesting. You probably could almost run a little bit of a line on... Um, on how it might follow the ages and dispensations a little bit. Because in early, early stage, yeah. the very earliest stages, um, you really, a child doesn't know right from wrong. They can't distinguish right from wrong um, from punishment. Um, and, and so it really is connected with, if I know I did something wrong because my parents are upset with me. Um, and, and then it becomes a little more reward focused and then it really becomes a little more social and how other people are developing different kinds of um, uh, relationships. Um, but, the, but there's a point when those values of your parents actually become a part of who you are. And to me, that's sort of like the move from the change that was talked about in the scripture lesson and is talked about in the book, because it really becomes who you are, say. Right. You really become, it really just becomes a part of who you are um, at that point. It's not, it's not something outside of you anymore. It's not something that's based on um, a commandment that was given to you. It's not a list of rules anymore. And this is true with um, moral development. Before the last stage, the last couple stages, it's about, it's sort of about there's right, there's wrong. We need to do the right thing. It's just the right thing. Um, mm -hmm. but, but it becomes more about values, that this is what's important. And you take on those values at a, as a mm -hmm. certain point. And that's really when you become your parent. You become your parents because you're taking those values out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, something that's hit me recently uh, well, it's always hit me because <laughs> because we talk you talk about adoption. Now, um, if you look at physical adoption, um, when do people want? What age group do you think people would want to adopt children the most? Thirties, forties, twenty, twenty, twenty. No, I mean, what age of the child? Oh, oh the what? young one. <laughs> young, yeah. I, I thought you guys were saying they wanted to adopt 30 and 40-year-olds. <laughs> that, that, that would be interesting. Um, yeah, yeah, you want to adopt them with, when they're a baby. Why? Mm -hmm. So you can... So yeah. you can... Yep, yeah, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> you can dictate, you know, their, yeah, what they're yeah. going to become. Exactly. You want to be able to have that influence on them um, because... To mold, mold them, them into, right, into what you want them to be. Exactly. And, 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 uh, and, and as a child gets older, you have less power to do that. Mm -hmm. So as humans, as people, normally people want to adopt somebody when they're a child. Because once, and, and, and there's a, it's, it's much more difficult to have an influence on a child um, after it's reached certain ages because right. they're already developing certain things. Right. Um, it's very difficult. Uh, to adopt a child, one of, one of the hardest things are adopting children who have experienced trauma and very negative experiences when they're younger, mm -hmm. um, because that really has caused them to be a certain way even more so. Now, just think about that from Yahweh's perspective or Yahweh Elam's perspective, because, see, we're being adopted. Mm -hmm. See, we've been raised by an abusive parent. <laughs> Yep. That's right. We've been raised by an abusive parent. Now, 
<laughs> so Yao, I mean, and, and we think about the love, and I know, like, there's nothing like philoprogenitiveness. Right. I mean, it's such a hard thing to imagine. Um, you know, it's it's just. I mean, we, most of us can understand it, even if we don't have children. <laughs> to some extent, we understand what it means. Mm -hmm. um, it's just such a powerful force. But think about somebody who, the kind of love that it takes to adopt. It's a much more intentional love that you have to give. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's right. really a, a difficult thing. And that's what our creator has done for us, is he's chosen to love us, even though that we were raised in the wrong place that's and right. by a bad dad. Yeah. And, and, and it just take what what that means is it really takes much more um, a much more uh, it really takes a, a stronger love to be honest with you mm -hmm. to break somebody through that it has to be such a consistent and powerful love mm -hmm. uh, and I, and that is just so powerful yeah. it's such a powerful thing um, as a therapist people frequently ask me because I work with people who have been just horrific stories I've worked with people who have been molested as infants. I've worked with people who have been just through terrible experiences and, and, um, mm -hmm. and you know that these terrible experiences hurt people. Um, but what I've, what I feel that I've seen in my, in my career with working with people like this, who have experienced these kind of things, that is really the people that have been able to survive it. And they like to use that word survival, you know, I've survived, um, is that there typically was a person in their life that really did show love to them. And even though they lived in the midst of this ter terrible uh, experiences and everything, that there was somebody that typically showed them love that helped them to get through. Mm. And it typically, that, just yeah. having that one person will, will help them to be able to, to, re to be, uh, the word they like to use nowadays is very common, is resilient, to be resilient mm. um, to adversity. Um, anyways, um, but again, no matter how old somebody's adopted, expressing love really has to do with ex with um, expressing who you are. Mm -hmm. it, it goes back to having to know somebody, and, and this is what where we're at with our our Creator. He's letting us know Him in a personal way, and it really is experiencing that love and mm -hmm. showing us that love and being able to mm -hmm. truly experience it ourselves, not just mm -hmm. talk about it or understand it from correlations and things like that, but to yes. truly experience that love is the same thing that has to happen to us. Yeah. See? And the more that we come to know somebody, the more mm -hmm. we will be like them. Right. Um, if, if, especially a parent, especially yeah. a parent, especially a parent. Now I, I'm, I said I wasn't going to be up long and I meant it. Um, I would like, you to get for me um, First John, the third chapter, first verse. First John three and one. <clears throat> Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of Yahweh. Now that's like, in a, you're looking at it an adoption. We weren't mm -hmm. called that before. Mm -hmm. Well, I know, I know that it was already set and he had his, he knew who he was going to save, which is another whole lecture. Um, but, but what manner of love to be called the sons of Yahweh, what manner of love um, that after we reach this age and we've been under, and we've had a father that has taught us everything wrong and mistreated us and let us be hurt. What manner of love that he calls us his son? Mm -hmm. keep, go keep going. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Yeah, keep going. Beloved, now are we the sons of Yahweh. Now we are the sons of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Keep going. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. Now, now. Now think about this. Well, actually finish that. There's one little part left there. Yeah. For we shall see him as, as he, he is. Yep. Yeah. Now think about this. I mean, he is, we've come down to class and we've, and we've learned. And look, this isn't taught anywhere else. I mean, I was in the seminary and uh, no, I've never heard anybody teach us. I've been through a lot of different trying to find God mm -hmm. places. And I've never heard anybody tell us that we could know him. Uh, for a certainty and that there was a way to come to know him. And right. uh, um, 
and to know him is eternal life. And so we've come down here because of this. I can hear you singing, Kathy. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> or whoever was singing. Um, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I like that. Um, anyways, uh, through this great vision and revelation, to have a chance to come down here and really know something about our creator, but then to have him actually ex to experience his love and have and be able to see that love and, and be just like our parents, the, as we come to know our parents, we become our parents, we become like our parents. Mm -hmm. Take um, new you know, Yahshua, ha you know, the, the great prayer, you know, uh, that, that mm -hmm. they, you know, we may be, they may be one as we're one, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and it really comes to the same thing. It comes to knowing him. And as much as we've gotten to know him, <laughs> read that verse one more time, mm -hmm. because as much as we've gotten to know him. Second, <laughs> uh, first John three and two, beloved, now are we the sons of Yahweh. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for mm. we shall see him as he is. For we shall see him as he is. There's more for us to see, right. and there's more for us to grow. Right. Um, the first speaker talked about that in the scripture. I mean, we 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 are new people, and we're 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 still growing, and and it's just we have so much to look forward to. Mm -hmm. And I'm just so thankful for his love. Again, it's just a joy to be able to visit with you and share with you guys, and to be here. And uh, I, I, I that's all I'm going to say today. I hope that you got something out of it. And um, all glory and praise go to Yahshua. Hallelujah. 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 Our next speaker will be Dr. Charles Marshall from the Tampa ID. Hey, yeah. Cool. <laughs> oh, that's a shock. Um, I was just uh, reading a little bit here in Job. Uh, I'm going to try to get into this just a little bit. I haven't really, <clears throat> I haven't really gotten into it. I just read it. Let's see what we can do. Job 33 started. 14. Mm -hmm. so what we've got going on right now with mankind is Yahweh is trying to speak to us, yep. trying to teach us something. And he did this, I'm talking about the pandemic, of course, at this period. Yes. But he has been working with us all along. And he's, uh, as Daryl was talking about, uh, <clears throat> he has He's 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 been working with us all along, and it's like yes. he was talking about you take on a lot of the attributes yeah. and a lot of your father, and uh, I can go along with that. And as a matter of fact, me and my father did not have a good relationship. Uh, my father, I'm not going to get into a lot of stuff, but my father could be very cold, and uh, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And uh, the last thing in the world I wanted to do was to be like my father. Uh, I did not, at that time, I'll just have to say, I did not love my father. Mm. And uh, one day uh, after my father died, uh, it was right after my father died, I was at going to the funeral and it was the morning before the funeral and he died in California. He was in the desert. <clears throat> and I took a walk out in the desert. And my fa and uh, Yahweh started preaching to me. Wow. In my own voice. Uh -huh. cool. And one of the, my pet peeves at the time was a lot of times I would <laughs> read Dr. Kenley's transcripts. And I would get, I would get a little bit irritated because he would be going through all this simplicity and all of this stuff. And I would be in my mind, I would be going, come on, come on, get to the point. Get to, you know, I know all this stuff. Get, get, you know, I want the good stuff, ah. <laughs> you know? And uh, I don't know if anybody else has ever been like that, but I know I have. Oh, sure. And uh, he started preaching to me in my own voice. And he started out in simplicity hmm. and basics. And then started, sh and I, I was a little irritated. And uh, then he started showing me things about myself. 
And he showed me how I was a lot like my father, even though I didn't want to be like my father. Mm -hmm. It was a real eye opener. And, uh, but he also told me that that was the physical showing forth the spiritual, but now he is my father. He is my heavenly father and he would shape me into his image and likeness. And, uh, and you can even, you can ask Jennifer when I came back, when I flew back home from that trip, I completely, I was completely changed. It, it completely changed me. Now here in Job, Job, Yahweh let, Satan loose on Job. He's let he's let Satan loose on all of us, mm -hmm. and he's told Satan the same thing with most of us. I'll put it like that, and with his sons. But he's brought us out of it, and he's done it through trials and tribulations and showing us about ourselves and things like that. Okay, so. Let's start at 33, and we'll go to ver uh, start, please, at verse 14. Job 33 and 14. For Elohim speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. Now, I, can, I, I look at that as he, the law and the prophets. Right. Okay, he speaketh once, he speaketh twice. That's the law and the prophets. I mean, there's other manifestations, there's other, but that is the law, that's to me is the law and the prophets. Go on. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, in slumberings upon the bed. And what he has done is he's showing us through dream or through a vision. Uh, I know I, especially when I came, first came into class, I used to think to myself, boy, Yahweh, just show me a vision. Well, he did and he woke me up. But show me a vision. You know, I want, I want to have a vision. And uh, not realizing that this teaching is a vision. Mm -hmm. It was a vision that was given to Dr. Kenley, which he has passed on to us. Right. But this is a vision. He's given us a vision. He's given his sons and his daughters this vision. Go on. Then he openeth the ears of men and sealeth their instruction. And that's exactly what he's done with us. He's opened up our vision. He's opened up our minds. You understand? And, and he sealed us with his instruction, or sealed in instruction. Go on. That he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man. That he may withdraw man from his purpose, and meaning this earth, this flesh, okay, and hide pride from men. We were all prideful, and some of us still have uh, some work to do in that area, okay? But he's taking this pride, he's taking this vanity away from us. Go on. He keepeth back his soul from the pit, and his life from perishing by the sword. He's, he's, the, I, I, I tell you sometimes, I, I just feel so bad, and I feel so terrible for these folks out here that do not know Yahweh and that do not understand his plan and purpose. Because even though what's going on around us, I I'm still have peace. You know, I, I still feel mm -hmm. righteousness, peace, and, and joy, and love, you understand, which the world don't have out here. But there's only one reason why I have this understanding and I have this knowledge and I have been given the privilege of understanding this vision, and that's because Yahweh has stepped within each and every one of us and caused us to. Otherwise, we would just be like every, everybody else out here in this world. And sometimes it really makes me feel bad for them because it's not their fault. It's not my fault that I see this. It's not their fault they don't see it. Yahweh has purposed us to see. We are so privileged. We, we are that adopted child. Mm -hmm. that, that, and Sherry understands this. Sherry has raised two uh, sons. She adopted those boys. And she's been a mother to them. And she loves those boys. You understand? Mm -hmm. And it, just like they were her own. 
So she can really understand this or anybody that's been adopted or anybody that's adopted can really, really, truly understand this even more so than I can, you see. But we have been adopted and it wasn't through anything of our own. It was just that I have chosen you. Mm -hmm. Just like somebody walking into the orphanage and saying, I have adopted you. Or in her case, you know, part of her, it was part of her family and she, I have, I will adopt you. It, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's mind boggling. Okay, go on, please. He is chastened also with pain upon his bed and the multitude of his bones with strong pain. Now see, he's saying here that he is chastening us, you know, also with pain. You understand? Now we've all, we're all, and still all going through uh, life struggles and we still got pain. And let me tell you, uh, at, uh, at Jennifer's age, you know, you understand, uh, we, <laughs> we feel great pain. You understand? <laughs> because I tell you what, uh, when I was young, I didn't understand what pain was. I'm telling you, I'm starting to understand now. The older you get, boy, I'm telling you. Uh, the other morning I went to get out of bed. I'd done some work the day before, and I, it, I couldn't even hardly get out of bed. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, pain is real. But this is all Yahweh, you see. This is all Yahweh teaching us. This is all Yahweh, you understand, bringing us to, into a knowledge and an understanding, you see. And it's, it's I'll go ahead and read. So that his life abhorreth bread, and his soul dainty meat. Go on. His flesh is consumed away, that it cannot be seen, and his bones that were not seen stick out. Now see, our flesh, or that flesh, what we see in the flesh, the things that we do in the flesh, you see, are, are being taken away from us. We don't no longer care, you know, about, uh, you see, people are, there's a lot of people, and I imagine Daryl, can really speak to this. There's a lot of people really, really upset right now and going through real problems because a lot of their 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 flesh, the the things in the flesh, is being taken away from them, like their jobs, their security. You see, and and and, and what's going on around is being taken away from them, and they have no peace, and they're perplexed, and and so on and so forth. You see, he is taking that away from us. You understand, and he's putting it with his love and his under and the understanding that he is going to take care of us. Now, we may not be pretty, we may not be rich, but he is going to take care of us. Mm -hmm. And he and in the end we're going to inherit eternal life. And Dr. Kinley said if we could only understand what it was that was to come, we would do anything. We would endure anything just just to have that privilege and honor just you know to inherit that okay read on please yay his soul I, 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 one more i'm sorry i'm sorry i apologize for interrupting you but see the flesh is being consumed away but his bones which is the inner man or the soul which were not seen will stick out in other words we will, you will be able to see that inner man okay read on please yea his soul draweth near unto the grave and his life to the destroyers. And boy, I tell you, one, it, we're all going that way. And I tell you what, the older you get, the more you see that one. I tell you that my soul is, you know, is being drawn near the, but it's not my soul, you see. He's saving my soul, you see. Read on, please. If there be a messenger with him, an interpreter, one among a thousand, to show unto man his uprightness, now, this is the important thing about these classes, because that's, we, we, we've heard from a couple of messengers already today. You understand? When we come to class, that's what we're doing. We're hearing the messengers. These are things that are being taught by Yahshua, the Messiah. I do not have the intellect. I do not have the understanding. I do not have the wisdom. All that I have and all that I can say is given to me by Yahshua, the Messiah. I am just a messenger. Daryl's just a messenger. We're, we're, all, uh, we're all just a messenger. Sasha, even Sasha, as smart as he is, is just a messenger. You understand? That's all we are. But thank Yahweh for all these messengers. Go on, please. 
Then he is gracious unto him and saith, deliver him from going down to the pit. I have found a ransom. Ah, we have found the ransom. And who is that ransom? Yahshua the Messiah, because he has shed his blood for us. Read. His flesh shall be fresher than a child's. He shall return to the days of his youth. I'm waiting for that one. Well, spiritually, I got it. Physically, I'm never going to get that. It's done. It's gone. But you know something? That's okay. Because with what I have and what Yahweh is replacing with my, you know, replacing my youth, you know, with the spiritual understanding of him, it's well worth it. And I love it. And I appreciate it. Go on ahead. He shall pray unto Elohim and he will be favorable unto him. And he shall see his face with joy for he will render unto man his righteousness. And that's exactly what he's doing. And that's why it's important to come to class. This is the only place we can get this. Yahweh has taken away us meeting in the flesh at this time, but he's replaced it, you see, with, with uh, Zoom and, uh, and uh, YouTube and things like that, where in actual reality, we're all getting together more than we used to Mm -hmm. Because it took us having to travel physically to do that. Now all we have to do is just sit in front of a computer. We can see each other, hear each other. We can hear people from other parts of the country. You know, it, it, is, it, it is this, you know, to a lot of people, you know, to the churches out here, it, it, it's a calamity because they can't get together. And even Trump, well, I don't want to get into him, but even Trump is telling, you, you're going to have to open up these churches. You know, even if it kills you, you're going to have to open up these churches. You know, and people wanted to, because that all they understand is the physical. All they understand is being together from a physical standpoint. They don't understand Yahweh's righteousness and spirituality. Okay, uh, go on. 27. He looketh upon men, and if any say I have sinned, and perverted that which was right, and it profited me not, he will deliver his soul from going into the pit, and his life shall see the light. And that's exactly what we're doing. I read this and it just, it just blew me away. I'm telling you. Uh, read on, please. Lo, all these things worketh Elohim oftentimes with man to bring back his soul from the pit to be enlightened with the light of the living. And that's, that's all we're going to read at this time, at this. But uh, that's what Yahweh is doing. He's taking our soul and delivering it from the pit. And right now with this pandemic, you see, Yahweh is very, very upset with the world because the world will not accept him. The world will not use his name. The world does not care about him and his name. I guarantee you one thing, this goes for men and women. You see, if you were pursuing a man or a woman, their name would be extremely important to you. Mm -hmm. And you would want to get their name and you would want to get it right. And then when we are dating, we try to do things to please each other. It's not after you get married that, you know, you know, and that's why there's so much divorces because then people quit trying to please each other. But in a relationship, what you want to do is try to please each other. And what Yahweh is doing is Yahweh is pleasing us. He's correcting us. He's, he's, he's taking these things away from us, but he's replacing it with so much. It's just like, I was, it was like I was a child when I was walking out in that desert and Yahweh showed me this. I was a child that had been turned loose, didn't know nothing, uh, in, in a sense, did not have a, 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 I don't like to say it like this, but in a way it's, it's true, didn't have a real loving upbringing you understand and it took me from that and brought me into into the most loving relationship you could ever have in your entire life as a matter of fact jennifer told me when i came into class she says i've never seen you hug so many people because we didn't hug we didn't do that so yahweh has changed me he's changed you he's changed all of us and it's just like Daryl was talking about, you know, brought us from relationships, you know, with, with, with him that was strained. We didn't know nothing about him. He took us, 
brought us into this, you see, brought us into a loving relationship. And now then we're turning out to be halfway decent people. We've got a long way to go. We're still learning, but we at least we can see the light at the end of the tunnel of what Yahweh is doing and how Yahweh is working with us. And with that, I'll turn it over to the next speaker. And thank you for the uh, uh, privilege and opportunity to say something. Hallelujah. 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 Our next speaker will be uh, Dr. Judith Turner, Tampa, Florida. Judith? That oh, I'm so sorry. Can everybody hear me? Yep. Yes. Yep. All right. Wow. Okay. Um, I am totally surprised. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess because I'm surprised, I want to go back a couple weeks to a scripture reading that we had. Um, oh, wow. Oh, my, 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 my. It was the one, it was like um, first, was it John? Where you, you wanted to do the whole scripture, but we ended up getting John 1 and 33 or something. Does that make sense? Because I have something, not a lot, but I have something I could say. And it was a couple weeks ago, Joel, and you wanted to do the whole scripture, but it was, you know, called wrong and without controversy. I think it's Timothy. First Timothy. Yep. First Timothy, um, three, I think. Okay. Awesome. First Timothy three and just go down to the end. 16. 16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of righteousness. Yahweh was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world. And I guess I just want you guys to kind of like meditate on what's being said. So Sherry, just kind of like read it again and read it slowly. Okay, 1 Timothy 3 and 16. And without controversy. There's no controversy about this. And, you know, when we um, have dealt in this class, no matter how long you guys have been in this class, there's always been controversy. And I remember um, one time when I first came into class, um, I was so excited that I knew the truth. But then there was somebody that said, oh, you don't think there's going to be any controversy in the truth? And I was like, it, it, it was a thunderstruck to me. I, I just thought, no, no, I didn't expect this. But this is Timothy, correct? Yeah. And it's mm -hmm. um, Paul talking to, to Timothy. And it's, there's no controversy so sherry i am so sorry and nope. i will not be long <laughs> i'm just shocked okay go ahead and without controversy there's no controversy in the truth as long as you stay in the the law and the prophets there's no controversy this great. is we're all here go ahead great is the mystery of righteousness Our Am I, are we excited that we are here in this gospel, mm -hmm. in the mystery of righteousness? Mm -hmm. we're, we're thankful for that. Sorry, yeah. I'm just shocked. Go ahead. Yahweh was manifest in the flesh. And um, with Sasha today and um, all the other lectures, has has Yahshua been manifest in the flesh? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, he's been yeah. manifest. 
to you and I and everybody else. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Justified in the spirit. Okay, he justifies us. I, I can go back there in Hebrews and do that, but he, he didn't even need to be justified because he created this creation. Go ahead. Scene of angels. Oh my gosh, he was an angel himself. Go ahead. Preached unto the Gentiles. Oh my word, yes. Preached unto us, mm -hmm. you know, because not a single one of us other than Sasha. Are you still there, Sasha? Sasha? I'm here. I'm uh, here. Yeah, Sasha is a Russian Jew. But we can't, none of us can claim that. Go ahead. Believed on in the world. Uh-huh. I believe. I believe this gospel. Go ahead. Received up into glory. Uh-huh. And that's what he, he did. That's what he was received up into glory. And go ahead. And this is no controversy. There's no controversy about this. Go mm -hmm. ahead. Going into the fourth chapter. Oh, and received up in glory. That's uh, it? Okay. Yes. So, um... Oh my word. Okay. Um, could we go get the, um, oh dear. I want the 10 virgins. That's what I want. And I have a, it, you know, I do have it somewhere. I think, I think it's Matthew 25th chapter. Okay. Thank you, Sasha. Uh, Matthew 25, yep. Oh, my, Matthew 25, that's where I have. I, okay, go, go ahead. And now look at it, you know, and I, I, this is what I've been thinking about um, since we've been quarantined in our households. And I know that other people have talked about it. You know, um, we all had to, they all had to stay in Goshen in their households. Mm -hmm. But um, just read this for me, please. Matthew 25 and 1. Mm -hmm. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Okay, so they're taking their lamps and they're going forth to meet the bridegroom. They're going, going forth to meet their bride. All right. Um, and what's in the lamp? Oil. Oil's in the lamp. Thank you, Sherry. Yeah, mm -hmm. the spirits in the lamp, you know, and you can think about the, the um, um, I, I don't know, the, the tabernacle pattern in the holy place. It was mm -hmm. oil that went in the lamp. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. Okay, so hopefully we're all the wise virgins, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that we have our oil in our lamps. Go ahead. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Right. You know, you know, when you go out camping, you always make sure that you have everything that you need. And the wise woman, but they went out to meet the bridegroom. Go ahead. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. In the dead of the night, mm -hmm. at midnight, what happened, Sherry? Read it again. And at midnight, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Uh-huh. Then all yeah. those virgins arose. Right. When mm -hmm. you think not, yeah. the bridegroom came. All right, and I'm going to show you what the bridegroom is doing. Go ahead. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise. Every wild, one of them. Every one, two, three, four to ten. Mm -hmm. But what did the silly ones do? And the foolish said unto the wise, give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. Hello. 
you know, we need to have enough for us. That's all I'm saying, mm -hmm. you know, and um, great. There's no controversy about this. This is what we're doing. Go ahead. Keep going. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. Too and late. Too late. Because what happens when mm -hmm. you go to buy? It's too late. We need to have it now. Am I making sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. And while uh, they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they the bridegroom came. And now look at what the bridegroom's going to do, Sherry. Just keep reading and finish this up. And then go to uh, Psalms, the 19th chapter. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. And the oh, door my gosh. They were ready to be married to him. Sorry. No. I'm no. just shocked. Go ahead. Keep the going. Door, and the door was shut. Door was shut. And what is the door now? I mean, we're shut in our mm -hmm. houses now. Mm -hmm. But if our, our, our lamps are full, our oil is full, we're going to make it through this, guys. We're going to make it through. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Afterward came also the other virgin saying, Master, Master, open to us. No. No. Mm -hmm. Are you going to open to anybody? Mm -mm. No. <laughs> no. Nope. It's shut. Go ahead. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour whereupon the Son of Man cometh. And this was at midnight, right? And mm -hmm. they were all sleeping because, you know, the principle is, you know, you're all sleeping. And all of a sudden at midnight, the cry mm -hmm. comes and the bridegroom is there. Mm -hmm. It's the bridegroom. It's the husband. Now go to uh, Psalms, the 19th chapter, please. Starting at one? R right at one. Psalm 19 and one. The heavens declare the glory of El, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. Okay. So um, is that what we've been learning down through these years? I don't care how many years you guys have been here. This is what we have learned, the law and the prophets, mm -hmm. day unto day. And we can, I can look out in my, my um, backyard right now, and I can see the whys in the trees in my backyard. All right? Day unto day. So if not, what does it say again, Pam? Go ahead. Day, in, day unto day uttereth speech, and uttereth. night unto night showeth knowledge. Um, and night unto night showeth forth knowledge. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, I just keep going back to Bob White because Bob White talked about the fact that, you know, Yahshua would, um, he would, um, you know, talk about things law and prophets during the day and the, the apostles or not the apostles the disciples would be like what are you talking about but then at night in the garden of gethsemane he would show forth knowledge and that's who we are folks he's showing forth knowledge go ahead there is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard no nope. keep going their line has gone out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. In mm -hmm. them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun. He set, Yahshua is in us, folks. Mm -hmm. He has set a tabernacle for the sun. And are we not a tabernacle? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We know that. Mm -hmm. We can see the tabernacle chart, you know, envision it in our eyes. And it's not for us. It's for Yahshua because Yahshua is the son, mm -hmm. right? So it's Yahshua in us. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and Read rejoices. Uh, five, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber mm -hmm. and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. And rejoices at a strong man to run a race and we talked about those 10 versions and they were waiting for the bridegroom and five of them were idiots mm -hmm. but the ones that 
rejoiced and, and Yahshua rejoiced. Yahshua rejoiced. He's coming out as a bridegroom ready to run a race. And if you're ready to run a race, have you been preparing for it? Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, I can't run a race right now because I haven't been preparing for it. <laughs> but, you know, he has worked all these dispensations for us. And I, I just, that, you know, I, that's, I guess, all I really have. But um, I thank you for the time. And I think that for my, for my own sake, um, keep those oil lamps full, please. Thank you for the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our next speaker will be Dr. Karen Martin. Good morning, class. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good morning. Well, it has afternoon. been a it has been a pleasure, privilege, uh, honor, a blessing, joy, glory. You can find all those actual um adjectives to describe this whole um purpose of Yahweh just manifesting. And listening to the previous speaker, I was just thinking about Sasha, and I was looking because at one point when I came into class. One of my questions was, and I, it had pondered me for a lot, what about those people in the Spanish-speaking country, in Russia, and those places that you don't even understand the language that they speak? Mm -hmm. How will Yahweh make a provision for them to understand? So these are some of the questions that would have pondered um, my heart and my mind. And gradually by coming to class, Yahweh has been revealing and he has showed us how these things are made possible and this is what establish our faith now i just want to go back to the scripture lesson quickly that's ephesians the fourth chapter and i wanted to read down onto um read one ephesians 4 verse 1 to 6. thanks ephesians 4 and 1. Mm -hmm. i therefore the prisoner of yahshua the messiah beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called thank you so here it is saying that you um paul was saying that he was a prisoner of yahshua the messiah that makes us no different we are a prisoner of yahshua the messiah and he said he beseech you that you are, you walk worthy according to the vocation wherewith you are called so you notice it's not you who entered this teaching or entered Yahshua, but Yahshua called you unto himself. And whatever mm -hmm. purpose he called you for, he has ordained that. Go ahead. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. And it says endeavoring to keep the unity in the bond of peace, read. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Elohim, one faith, one baptism, one Yahweh and father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. Thank you. Now, when you look at that, it's talking about the unity of the spirit. It says there's one body. Now we together are many bodies. So it could not be talking about us in this state now that we're in a physical body. But it says there's one body, it didn't say bodies. And it says one spirit. Even as you are called in one hope of your calling, it says one Yahweh, one faith, one baptism, one Yahweh and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all and it takes me right back so this scripture takes me right back to what um dr Hewell spoke about when he um was mentioning about um the father and the son relationship and yahweh yeshua had proved that even when he was walking around now i want you to get me um in genesis where um i want you to get me exodus 24 and verse 16 and then the next reader can just pick up um, Genesis 1 and 1. Exodus 24 and 16. Mm -hmm. 
and the glory of Yahweh abode upon Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. Thank you. And there's a colon. No. Yeah. And I, I, because of the time, I will not have time to go into how Moses was born and how so on. But right here in Exodus 24 chapter, this was where Yahweh took Moses atop Mount Sinai. And right. he was going to declare to Moses what happened prior to Moses' birth. Because we thought that, because um, we thought that the Genesis was before the Exodus. But the, the actual happenings of Genesis happened before Moses was born, but Moses, Yahweh had to show Moses in a vision what happened. So right at that colon there in Exodus 24, 16, Yahweh is now taking Moses to show him what happened prior to his birth. So mm -hmm. get me Genesis 1 and verse 1. So right at, Exodus, right at Exodus 24 and 16, that's where you insert Genesis 1 and verse 1. Read. Right. Genesis 1 and 1. In the mm -hmm. beginning, Elohim created the heaven and the earth. Okay, so in the beginning of what? We thought that this was in the beginning of the creation, but no, this mm -hmm. was in the beginning of Moses' vision. Moses saw Yahweh Elohim created the heaven and the earth. Read. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness mm -hmm. was upon the face of the deep. Mm -hmm. And the spirit of Elohim moved upon the face of the waters. And Elohim said, let there be light, and there was light. And we have come to understand that light was on the first day. So, and remember, nothing can live without the physical light. So it's not talking about a physical light there. It's talking about the two mysteries are Yahweh Elohim, who is the light of the world. And this was why when Yahshua the Messiah came in, he said, I am the light of the world. So, it, and it says, remember, it says, it's one Yahweh who is above all, through all and in you all. So it, it's not, it, it, it doesn't take a genius now to realize that plants can grow without the physical sun because Yahweh Elohim is the true light. I want you to jump down to the verse where he made all the animals. That's the 26th verse and the 27th. Genesis 1 and 26. Mm -hmm. And Elohim said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Okay. And let them so hold, hold it there. When you look at the 25th verse, he created all the animals and everything, all the animals after its kind. So now he said, let us make man in his image after our likeness. Read. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Okay, great. So Yahweh is saying, let us make man. Now, look at the 27th verse, and this is Moses now speaking. Remember, when Moses went atop Mount Sinai, he saw Yahweh Elohim in a vision. Now, that vision or the pattern, or the because it was he saw him in the tabernacle pattern, then all of that, that vision that he saw, Moses is now explaining in the 27th verse what happened. Read. So Elohim created man in his own image. In the image of Elohim created he him. Male and female created he them. Thank you. So right here, based on what Moses saw in his vision, then he saw when Adam was created, he realized that the same vision he saw of Elohim, Adam was created that way. So that's what he saw. So this is why he could have said, man was made in his image after his likeness. Because what happened, when he saw Adam, he could say, oh, that's exactly what I saw in the vision. So he now know that even he himself, Moses, was created in the image and likeness of the creator. Because all it was, it was just Yahweh who is spirit materialized as man. Now, when you look for the meaning of um, image, it says an image is a representation of something or someone or a photograph of an idea you're picturing in your head or the way you or others think of you. It says an example of an image is a painting of your father or a picture taken with a camera. When you look at lightness, now lightness and image are similar. 
but there is a spiritual attribute to it as it regards to lightness. Because when you look at the meaning of lightness, it's a similarity in appearance or character or nature between persons or things. It says a copy, the state or fact of being like or similar. So now you understand what is it that Yahweh Elohim is Yahweh's spirit. What is it that makes up Yahweh Elohim in who is spirit? His nine divine attributes. Now his nine divine attributes, those are spiritual attributes. Those same attributes was what was in Adam who was man. So as they talk about the father and the son, and, and, and as um, the previous speaker had mentioned about the attributes that you would have of your father, and this is why we can say, oh, the child is like the mother. Oh, you get that from your mother. You didn't get that from me. So now we are understanding these things, and we could not have understand or to go and explain the scriptures if the, this divine vision and revelation was not revealed unto us. And like myself, too, when I came to class, I thought I had to have a divine vision because I read where Dr. Kinley said, you have to have a divine vision and revelation. So mm -hmm. I was thinking that I wanted to have a divine vision and I am in class and I just could not see this vision that I'm having. And I used to ask, I used to pray, I used to say, the whole Christ like I'm not going anywhere because I'm not having the divine vision that he had. But only to realize that it is only one vision and it's the same vision that we're having today. Just that Dr. Kinley got it one shot and he was able to express it in just one shot while we have to go here and we have to be coming for years and we are still unable to unravel everything in the vision. So here it is now, man, the nine divine attributes, which is wisdom, knowledge, intelligence, love, love, justice, you know, the nine divine attributes, they are what formed the soul and that's what got into Adam. Yahweh Elohim just formed man from the dust of the earth or he himself manifested of man because remember it says it's Yahweh who is above all, in all and through all. So even the dust that you pick up from the earth, that's Yahweh. The dust that has no value and it says you wouldn't plant anything in dust because it wouldn't grow. That dust is Yahweh. But then there's a greater part of him which is when he manifested his nine divine attributes in you, this is why when Yashua, I'm just gonna jump to the fulfillment because I only have three minutes on the clock. When Yashua the Messiah was walking around and he said to them, I and my father are one. Now they're saying, Philip said, Master, every day you come and you're talking about the father, the father, the father. Show us the father that it might suffice us. And he said, Philip, are you yet so long been here with us? And you don't see the father? I and my father are one. I am in me and my father. I am in the father and the father is in me. So this, you know, they, it, was, it was a great turmoil to Jews. They started saying to him, oh, this man has a devil. A devil is in him. It's not nothing new when we tell people today that, listen, we are the creator manifested in our body. They said, boy, you're some devil. Don't so read that over there in the fulfillment when um, Philip was talking to him. I think it's in John. Now, when Yahshua told him, I and my father are one, then he said, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. Mm -hmm. Now, bear in mind, his father lives in heaven. And he was standing on earth in a heavenly state. So he told him, I'm going to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. Now he was on earth in a physical body in a heavenly state. He could not have done that to the disciples. And he said to them also, there are also other sheep that I have, which is not of this fold. Them also will I bring in, which was the Gentiles, because he was talking to the Jews and the Jews only. So after his death, his burial, and his resurrection, all Yahshua did, Yahweh Elohim Yahshua did, manifested. He got into the 120 that was on the day of Pentecost. And he filled them. His spirit filled them. That's why he told him, I will not leave you comfortless. Now he said to them that um, I go to prepare a place. So he is now putting them in that state. This is why he said, in my father's house are many mansions. 
what are the many mansions that are in his father's house? In his father's house, the many mansion is divine love, divine wisdom, knowledge, crowned with intelligence, love, beauty, justice, foundation, power, and strength. Those are mansions in a house. And today, even people will not understand how do you have a house and have mansion in a house because a mansion is bigger than a house. Can so you say, oh, do you live in a house? But I live in a mansion. It means that I live in something that's much bigger mm -hmm. than a house is. But they don't understand the spiritual attribute. So right now, as we are walking on earth, once you are a true recipient or you, the Holy Spirit is resurrected in you, you and the Father are one. That's the state that he put them in. I and my Father are one. We are no different from Yahweh Elohim Yahshua. Only thing is Yahweh has manifested his spirit or put his spirit in us and that, in, that is in part and not in the sum total or total as Yahweh being the all in all. And showing the father and the son relationship as the bride, the bridegroom and the husband, he's a husband, he's a father, he's a son. It's the same principle when you look at the different principle manifested to us. Some of us are fathers, we're son, we're, you understand, we're husband. So Yahshua being resurrected in our heart and our mind, that's making us one, the unity of the spirit. That's why it says there's only one spirit. That one spirit is in all of us. He's the father, Yahweh, who is the father of all, above all, through all, and in you all. So with this, I know the time um, has gone. And, you know, we could have got into many things, but it was so beautiful, so beautiful to hear the different brethren speaking and, um, you know, hearing... Mm -hmm. A different, you know, as uh, as I, I, Sasha, who is a Jew by birth, and realizing that he, the way that he grew up is not the way of righteousness, but Yahweh, you know, it's a blessing, brethren. It's a blessing, and to know that Holy Spirit in you, that's your only hope of glory, and that's what the founder has tried to tell us in the aim. Yahshua, the Messiah, in you your only hope of glory. Get me Colossians 1, 26, and I'll finish. Colossians 1 and 26. Mm -hmm. Even the mystery, which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest, manifest to his sons. So you, if you see that mystery being made manifest to you, you are a son. Mm -hmm. So you are a son, and the son is one with the father. Read. To whom Elohim would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is the Messiah in you, the only hope of glory. Did you hear that? It says Yahshua in you, and that's your only hope of glory. And once Yahshua is in you, you are one with the father waiting for this glorified, waiting to take off this flesh, to be in that eternal peace, in joy and happiness in Yahshua the Messiah. Read. Whom we preach, warning every man in That's teaching. what we have been doing. That's what we have been doing since 1931. Preaching, warning every man. Read. And teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Yahshua the Messiah. So this is what we have been doing from 1931 until now, preaching and warning every man in all wisdom that we may present every man or every soul perfect in Yahshua the Messiah. And until that soul is perfect and until the son of um, righteousness in you, Yahshua, until the soul is perfected, then you won't. Once the sun is perfected in you, then you exit this body. You have nothing to worry about. And that's it. Thank you for your time, brethren. It was well, it has always been a pleasure, you know, to join with the brethren, whether Zoom or physically, to share some of the things that Yahweh has allowed um me to share. And I love listening to the brethren to hear the different aspects of the teaching. It has always been a joy. All praises to Yahweh Elohim through Son Yahshua. Hallelujah. 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 All right.
class. That was a beautiful class, and I hope everybody enjoyed what um, the previous speakers had to say. And um, we thank Joshua for allowing us to gather together again once more on this Zoom. And we hold classes um, on Wednesdays and Sundays, Wednesdays from 7 to 9, and on Sundays from 11 to 1. I and mean, we all stand and be dismissed for the doxology taken from the last two verses of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time and now and ever. Let us all say hallelujah. 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 hallelujah.